time to get up. Wake up, 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 wake up. I am not a superhero. It is true that I have endured the type of soul-crushing destruction beyond what most people dream about in their worst nightmares. It is true that I have suffered and that my sense of reality has had to shift. And it is true that there is an uplifting follow-up chapter to my story. But this is not my only truth, and this is certainly not glory. This is just one part, and as I was traveling through hell, did I eat the pomegranate seed? Did I look over my shoulder? I sure as hell did. And my rigid expectations smoldered, nearly burning me alive. I am sadly responsible for the way I almost died. Because, like a stubborn child, I could not let go of the articulate, talented, emotional, and loving girl that was stolen in the night. I felt I had to fight against impermanence. I would wake up only when I was forced to engage, and I refused to turn the page. I thought to myself, my spirit has left. How can I live with just a body with vacant eyes and a shoddy, broken set of attributes and skills? I was so determined to live in the past that I passed over opportunities to build a new life, albeit with Lego blocks instead of marble or stone. But people all around the world use lots of different materials to make their homes. And just because we all someday face the big bad wolf doesn't mean that we decide not to build. So for a few years, I was out of touch with my will. I kept one foot in death rather than to engage with the unknown experience of taking my first breath as a survivor. I let my self-pity be the driver of the beat-up Ford circling my new house, never stopping to open the door. I convinced myself for so long that there was nothing more for me to live for. But slowly, under the surface, that quiet, persistent will, that base human impulse began to creep up into my heart until months later, I could feel my pulse. It wasn't particularly pronounced or dramatic, but I knew that I was on my way out of this static place I had pouted and retreated to for so many countless days. I knew the change would be slow and uncertain, and it wasn't the lifting of the curtain of my mental illness which saved me. It wasn't my heroic sense of bravery. It was a slow and cautious realization that I could loosen the chains of my self-slavery. But this did not come from some special quality I had always possessed. I dressed myself in the tears and the devotion of so many who saw my childish rigid hold on the old me. And in time they reached past my defenses and they sold me on my worth. So look not to those who suffer as pillars of strength born with the ability to swim the length of the channel of hope. Look to yourself at how your acceptance of their stubborn, self-pitying humanity might help them to cope. It is true that I no longer feel bereft, but without your reflection of the person I could not see, I probably would have left. So hold your loved ones and take in their suffering. Don't make them be heroes. Contain them with their distant gaze and the few words they have to say. Okay. Maybe we are heroes, but not in the way you might think. Even the intrepid among us might sink without someone to hold them. I used to own memories, but because of you, I sold them for a future. <laughs>